Okay, we're going to have a look at solving a few equations involving the binomial coefficient. Um, so, example one, we're going to solve n choose 2 is equal to 6. Okay, so essentially we want to work out that if we're choosing two things from something, there are six possibilities. What is that something that we're choosing from? So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this term here. Okay, because in your formula, you are given the formula, n factorial over r factorial over n r times n minus r factorial. So we're going to rewrite this left-hand side. So this left-hand side will become n factorial over 2 factorial times n minus 2 factorial. And that is still equal to 6. Remember, just when we think about generally about a sequence of numbers, numbers would go n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, and if we go back the other way, n minus 1, n minus 2. So remember before, if we had something like 7 factorial over 5 factorial, we would rewrite our 7 factorial. We would rewrite our 7 factorial in terms of 5 factorial. So what we're going to do here is we're going to rewrite n factorial in terms of n minus 2 factorial. Okay, so that is going to become n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. And that's over 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial. And that is equal to 6. We can simplify our n minus 2 factorials. So we're going to have n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2, which is equal to 6. Um, then we're just going to head and solve this. n bracket n minus 1 is equal to 12. n squared minus n minus 12 equals 0. And if we factorise that, we're going to have n minus 4 n plus 3 is equal to 0. We could split and we'll have n minus 4 equals 0. So we'll have n equals 4 and n plus 3 equals 0. So n equals negative 3. Okay, but if we kind of link this to Pascal's triangle, remember this relates to the row that this would happen in. This relates to the row in which this would occur. And so Pascal's triangle, we can only have um, positive rows or, pos or greater than or equal to zero rows. So this is not possible um, since n has got to be a natural number. Okay, so our answer here would be n equals 4. I'm just going to link this as to why um, this would be the case. Um, I suppose you could have actually just went ahead and used Pascal's triangle to work this out. 1 for, oh that's a mistake, uh, 1, 3, 3, 1, I was going ahead to the next row there, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Um, okay, so we wanted to do something choose 2 is equal to 6. So we could think about, okay, so in which options can I choose 2? So that's 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, so that's the second element, 0, 1, 2, second element, 0, 1, 2, second element, 0, 1, 2, second element. Okay, so then we can see here that we're working in row 4, therefore n is, n is equal to 4. Okay, you could have gone that route, but obviously algebraically is much more straightforward, particularly if it becomes a wee bit more involved. Okay, that was example 1. Example 2. Make this a bit bigger. Uh, let's do n choose 1 plus n choose 2 is equal to 28. Okay, so this is a wee bit more awkward here. This is where we're going to need to um, draw upon this knowledge here from the previous video. Remember before when we had 5 choose 2 plus 5 choose 3. The answer to that was 20, which is the same answer as 6 choose 3. 
Okay, essentially, for example, we were in the sixth row. Whoops. In the sixth row, to get this value here, we would add the two values um, below it. So notice what happens here. Um, we essentially move down a row. Okay, so if we're moving down a row, this would become n plus the end plus the nth plus one row. So if we started here at row two, if we were adding elements in row two, that would give us the result in row three, position two. And that's equal to 28. Can I zoom back a wee bit? So we are going to use our formula here, remember, so n choose r, this is given to you in your formula sheet, is n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. Okay, so this in this case, n has been replaced with n plus 1. That's n plus 1 factorial over 2 factorial n plus 1 minus 2 factorial. And that's equal to 28. We can keep going ahead and solving here. n plus 1 factorial. There will be a bit of simplifying first. 2 factorial, and that's going to be n minus 1 factorial. And that's equal to 28. So we're going to want to simplify these factorials. So n plus 1 is bigger than n minus 1. So we're going to rewrite n plus 1 factorial in terms of n minus 1 factorial. So n plus 1 factorial can be written as n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 factorial. And that's over 2 factorial n minus 1 factorial. And that is equal to 28. We can simplify here, and I'm just going to write, so we've got n plus 1 times n, so I'm just going to write that as n bracket n plus 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2, which is equal to 28. And keep going and solving here, is equal to 56. So we've got n squared plus n minus 56 is equal to 0, which is going to factorise into n plus 8. n plus 8, n minus 7 equals 0. We can split and solve. n is going to be negative 8. n is going to be 7. It can't be negative 8. We can't have a negative 8th row. Um, the values of n need to be greater than or equal to 0. The values of n are natural numbers. So therefore, n is equal to 7. Okay, let's even just think about this in terms of Pascal's triangle again. You wouldn't be expected to do this, but always like linking it back. I'll try and make this as big as I can here. So we've got 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And now we're at our seventh row here. I need to move that over a wee bit. 1, 7, 16, 20. I've made a wee error here. That'll be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Then 1, 7, 21, 35, 35. 2171. Okay, so we wanted to work out when would it when in Pascal's triangle does it happen that when I add the first and the second element together that I get 28. Okay, and we can see that in the seventh row here, when I add the first and the second element together, I get 28. So therefore n is equal to 7. Once again, you wouldn't be expected to use Pascal's triangle, but I just kind of like to try and link it together. Thank you very much.